I'm half uh, half Middle Eastern, half Puerto Rican, and Irish. Uh, I had grown up in Syria f between the ages of seven and fifteen, so um, yeah, coming here was a little difficult. Just having to. Um, learn all of the information that I had learned up until that point in a whole new language. Uh, like when I was thinking of going to CS or uh, engineering in general, um, I kind of looked at it and I, I just thought, oh I don't really see a lot of women, I guess I shouldn't, like that's not where I should be. Um, I think I'm, I'm the only one in the entire company that I've actually seen who wore the hijab. So I feel like the representation, um, like if, if I don't find representation in that field, I want to become the representation in that field. Uh, when I initially moved to uh, Chicago, um, uh, and uh, I always had this feeling where people are not accepting me uh, because of my nationality, because I come from a different country, uh, maybe because of my accent. I, I never knew exactly what it was, but uh, it, I always felt that. And initially, I had a huge fear of public speaking, and I, I just kind of felt that that's the default for an introvert. Introverts have to have that, but no, I um, I realized that later that I can just be an introvert where, but I can uh, grow over my fears. When I was probably around middle school, um, I wanted to be a dancer that also did math. Academically, it was hard for me, and it was really hard for me to understand that because. I've been programming since high school, so I should be just as good as everyone else, but I wasn't. And then I started to feel like, well, maybe this isn't for me because no one else is struggling and no one else here is like me. And so I really struggled in classes and then that made me kind of feel imposter syndrome, which made, which made me think, as a woman, as a black person, as a black woman, the combination where there's even less of us, I'm not supposed to be here. Um, I almost changed to a different major. I was temporarily on academic probation. Yeah. And that was really hard for me. I didn't like anything as much as I liked computer science. Computer science is just so interesting. <laughs> I can't be bogged down by, oh, you're in tech and you're not a white or Asian male so you don't belong here. I love my job and I can still dance on the side and I didn't have to give up either. When you're trying to choose a major you always hear like people that choose CS and do really well, they've been programming since they were four. When you don't have that background you're like, am I smart enough? I don't know, you know. Um, so that was kind of, also I didn't code before computer science or before my degree started so I was like I don't know if I belong because I the first time in my family who went to college first and graduated like I had a few people well my mom and dad went to college and then they they dropped out like it's okay to fail and like the important thing is uh, getting any sort of hard like, accomplishing any sort of hard task is if you fail you just keep going like even if you fail how many classes it doesn't matter at the end of the day it matters like like you finish that's that's it um, so I failed like I don't know, six, a lot of classes, so. So finding myself was one challenge, um, definitely. Figuring out um, who I am, being comfortable with that. And this was like in April, so it was late for internships. And about this internship in India, you get to go to India, you get to travel and CS, you do software engineering, and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. I had already applied to like most of the emails. And I was like, I'm, you know, it's an opportunity, you know, try to catch it. So I, I uh, um, applied and then they called me and interviewed and they're like okay like you're 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 gonna come and I was like oh god I don't know maybe this this is, sounds too good to be true uh, but I went and the internship was amazing uh, software engineering is is a group effort like even like in like you know actual teams and jobs and whatnot it's a group effort and so like don't feel bad if you don't, can't get it either because you will be good at something that that person won't be good at. I actually had a teacher who said, who looked at me and there was a, another female in the class. We would make like really creative and like colorful visual basic um, designs. And I remember my teacher just being like, 
this is why I love having girls in the class. They always come up with something that's really interesting to look at. And I thought that was really weird um, until I grew up and realized that is exactly true. Before my architecture class, I didn't know what a bit was and everyone else seemed to know. Everyone else seemed to understand like fully what a bit, bite, nibble, half a bit, whatever it is. And I just had no idea what the fuck was going on. I was like, what are you teaching us right now? And it's the fundamentals of like how computers work. And working was really hard. Like, you, you don't emotionally prepare yourself after college to start working. Uh, no one prepares you for that. And it's chaos. Like, you don't know what's going on so much of the time. And you're supposed to be the person who has the answers. And if you don't learn how to ask for help, if you don't learn how to learn things on your own as projects are coming to you and you have a deliverable in like a week, those sorts of things are uh, also really big challenges that, you know, I think everyone has to deal with. I think like the bigger issue is you really second guess yourself a lot as a woman in engineering. You're like, oh, am I only getting this because I'm a woman or am I not getting this because I'm a woman? And you, you're in a constant battle because of that. As I've accelerated my career and like made more money and people look at me differently in meetings so I can stand there in a t-shirt and shorts and talk to executives. I think that's really, you know, it's a good confidence boost.